Hey everyone, so it's officially been two weeks since Mortal Kombat 1 was released and over the two weeks I think quite a lot of people have had plenty of time with the game, myself included, to the point where I'm kind of now beginning to form sort of my overall opinions on the game. You know I don't like to rush reviews out early on because I think it's just not conducive. You need some time with a game before you can actually make an accurate judgment on it, especially considering the things that have been discovered about Mortal Kombat 1 over just the last couple of days uh, it really does shape your opinion overall on the game. So yeah this is going to be my review of the game basically I'm just going to talk about some of the things I love about this game some of the things that I really dislike but overall if I had to give like a five second summary I would say that this game is a huge improvement on Mortal Kombat 11 a lot of the issues were addressed However, for a 2023 AAA game, a AAA fighting game, and the usual polish you expect, and compared to the usual polish you expect from an NRS title, this game does fall quite flat. There are some weird emissions and overall polish issues which do diminish the overall experience. But before we get into that, let's talk about the positives. I think the biggest thing I like about Mortal Kombat 1's gameplay is that the core fighting gameplay. This is the area where the biggest improvements were made compared to Mortal Kombat 11, which to me just had a super boring style. I like the overall idea of Mortal Kombat 11, but when it came down to it, the gameplay was just so slow so basic and so boring that I didn't have the stamina to stick around. Luckily, in Mortal Kombat 1, now you actually have options for every character. Characters do feel like they have their full toolkits. I'm so happy that the variation system is finally gone, you don't pick moves, you don't pick variations, meaning that characters actually have their full toolkits and have projectiles, combo tools, wake-ups, armored moves, options, instead of everything being scattered around like two or three variations. Combos are way more interesting, there are way more options and combo pads, especially combined with the cameo system. And yeah, just overall the characters actually feel complete. A lot of the overpowered and sort of annoying stuff from MK11 was also removed. I'm talking about throws being extremely OP. Pokes into throws. Pokes have been nerfed quite a lot. I feel like it's easier to react to throws in this game than ever, although they are still a guess. I'm so happy that the crushing blow system didn't make a return. I thought that system was just stupid. There's meter management finally. So yeah, everything is just gameplay wise in the right place. Adding on to that, I also gotta mention and shout out the cameo system. While I do not think this game beats MKX in terms of the creativity, uh, the combo variability and all that, the cameo system comes damn close. This is the most dynamic and sort of fast decision making game since MKX, uh, a gameplay feature that was sorely missing both in Injustice 2 and Mortal Kombat 11. The cameo system is really fun and it just, like I said previously, gives characters a lot of combo variety and options. I do like this idea of sort of covering your character's weaknesses with your cameos. Like if you're playing General Shao, you can pick like someone like Motaro or Sector who have quite strong zoning tools and fill in that gap. It's really fun, plus it gives you a lot of combo creativity, just like being able to combo off of throws with Cyrex, which is OP, but that's besides the point. The point is that it's fun and it gives you a lot of options. You can mix and match. I think almost every cameo has its place and can be used, although there are some very clear standouts, which like is going to be a bit of a nightmare to balance. I think the cameos that stand out as really OP um, are going to be difficult to sort of tone down. And then you have characters like Shujinko, who's like, like who's ever going to use Shujinko? And adding on to that, moving on from the gameplay itself, I do like the roster of this game. I think this is a good mix of the expected classics and the 3D era favorites. Honestly, I do not mind characters like Kano, Devora, uh, Sonya skipping a game. Uh, although they might be back as DLC, you never know. But currently they are skipping a game which I do not mind at all. 
I think Giras was the expected choice to return from MK11. He was easily the most memorable standout character of that game. Like, who would ever want Collector to come back? Um, yeah, Giras definitely is the cool one, just like how Devora was from MKX. And even the boring characters like Li Mei and Reiko, who weren't really interesting or stand out in their previous entries, had some cool redesigns to make them more memorable, and they actually now feel like unique characters. Also, I gotta mention, I'm so happy that the stages and the music have finally been improved for MK1. This has been a long-standing issue, reaching even back to MKX uh, with NRS titles that the stages were just extremely gray, extremely dark, nothing stand out about them, there was nothing going on in the background most of the time. Some of the stages in MKX were just like straight up unusable. I'm talking I'm like talking about the infected Sky Temple, like who thought that would be a good stage idea? But overall, this has undergone a huge improvement in MK1. You now actually have visually stunning and memorable stages, which does help with the fighting. It does help the action when you actually have something pleasant to look at in the background. And the music as well. We finally have some memorable uh, themes for the stages and the characters. Generic music was a massive issue for pretty much every NRS title. Even MK9 had that issue. And we finally have something that actually stands out. You know, fighting games are known for their memorable character and stage themes. You know, like the Guile theme, Ken's theme, the, the music from Tekken. It's just like also memorable. And MK was always falling behind in that department. And then, yeah, lastly, I do gotta mention and talk a little bit about the story. I honestly think the story is fun. I beat it in a couple of hours on normal just to unlock Havoc. I'm not a huge fan of uh, the lockouts, but we'll get into the criticisms in a little bit. But yeah, you do need to complete the story to get Havoc. Uh, and it's fine, the story is fine. I do think it jumps the shark a little bit at the end with just like referencing Armageddon that much. I feel like the themes and the events that happen in this game could have been stretched to two games because it does feel like a, a duology or even a trilogy squeezed into one game. And it's kind of unfortunate how this game was released at a point where basically everybody is sick of multiverse storylines and this game has a multiverse storyline which just like, like I said, I think people are tired of the multiverse but hey, that's what we have. And then there are some other minor things that I think are improvements in MK1. I think finally, for me, there's a right balance with the customization in this game. It doesn't feel too load boxy and overwhelming as it did in Injustice 2 and MK11. You still have skins and you still have some ability to express yourself and choose gear for your character, but it doesn't feel like a goddamn looter shooter when you are uh, playing what you did in previous games. Although I do gotta mention that the shop is absolutely horrible in its current state, there's nothing in it that's worth it, and it does seem like a lot of the color palettes or skins uh, are kind of generic and samey. Um, like, do you want an orange Sub-Zero or a blue Sub-Zero of a different shade? Like, it, it doesn't make that much of a difference. But yeah, I do think the overall customization, if it stays like that, I won't like mind it. You have some reward for the casuals, they can like customize their little toys, i.e. their characters, but it's not as distracting and annoying as I found it in MK11. But yeah, I think this is a good segue as any to go into some of the complaints I have with this game. And honestly, like I mentioned at the start, most of my complaints uh, concern either just absolutely baffling choices made by NRS, which would have taken zero effort to fix or implement and would have helped the game a ton. And a ton of weird like quality of life issues and just quality issues in general. Which make me almost question whether this game was rushed out or not. I think people are sort of holding this sentiment that it, this game does seem a little bit rushed. Uh, the current theory is that because Suicide Squad was absolutely dog shit and got a really negative reception and was delayed, people are speculating that WB games were pushing NRS to uh, get this game out for sort of the big autumn game release schedule. And honestly, looking at some of this stuff, it definitely feels like it could be true because there are, like I said, some weird polish issues overall. And my biggest complaint, honestly, if I had to sum it up, concerns this game's online. 
I think the state of online currently in Mortal Kombat 1 is simply unacceptable for a fighting game or any online game in 2023. There are so many key features that are just simply missing in this game. Biggest one for example, why can't I queue for ranked and casual matches from practice mode? I mean, this is something that literally every single other fighting game, indie fighting games and low budget fighting games manage to have. Why can't AAA MK with its massive budget implement this? Seriously, this is so baffling to me. Why can't I be in practice mode and queue for online at the same time? Why has this never been inside NRS games? And why is it that like five games on, we still do not have this feature? Adding on to that online in general, tell me, what the hell is the point of showing me if a player is on Wi-Fi, if I can't filter them out or decline them? This game, like I said, does not have the most stable connections, but currently Wi-Fi and even some wired connections are an absolute gamble, even at low pings. So my question is, where is my Wi-Fi filter and where is my connection filter? The game unfortunately is extremely generous with its sort of ping limits. So unless the player is literally like, I don't know, like 180 milliseconds of ping, I can't actually back out of the online match. So. Like I said, where is my connection filter? Every single fighting game gives me the opportunity to say, I only want five bar connections. It's not like this game doesn't have the size of the player base to make it so that if I set it to five bar, I'm not gonna get matches. Just let me set an option where I will have the best connections. It's extra annoying because the combat league system in this game is uh, best out of five. So if you get a terrible connection and like some 12 year old is playing on their mom's Wi-Fi while she's watching Netflix or they're like on the McDonald's connection, uh, you're just stuck against them and it just makes it absolutely nightmarish to play or you can just back out and take the L, but I shouldn't have to be forced to take the L I should just be able to filter these bitches out. Like I said, again, this is something that every single fighting game, Street Fighter 6, Tekken, everyone can manage it, so why can't MK? Moving on to that, also related to the more sort of competitive part of this game, practice mode is a huge downgrade compared to how it was in literally every single previous MK title, even Injustice as well, but especially compared to Mortal Kombat 11. Again, this just concerns baffling choices. Things that were solved and people liked in previous entries are just missing. First of all, I think the information in the current training mode is organized a lot less clearly. The menus combined basically the pokes as well as the strings, whereas they used to be in separate pages previously, which I think just was like way more organized. The menu and the menu system is way more confusing. Like why isn't safe settings on by default or why don't I have full meter on by default? It's just so confusing. And adding on to that, the basic quality of life features like tagging combos are missing. Seriously, where is the ability to tag combos? How and why has this been a feature in like ton of NRS titles and how and why is it missing here? Seriously, this to me seems like the simplest thing to implement. This can't be that hard to code into a game. So where is it? Nobody has ever had an issue or complained about this feature and it makes learning characters like 10 times more annoying. And this is extra frustrating, the state of practice mode I mean, because I think the tutorials overall are good, although MK11 had that really good feature of character tutorials which is gone, I do like the combo challenges and I think the general gameplay tutorials are extremely detailed and just like worth going through in this game, which makes it even more baffling that practice mode is so bare bones and there are so many key features missing. Finally, besides the actual subpar online connections, the game overall is suffering from like a surprising number of bugs and glitches, which range from mildly annoying to actually game breaking. I think at this point, everybody who follows MK is aware of the player one advantage bug. NRS have come out and addressed it saying that they are going to fix it. And it probably isn't going to be a very difficult fix, but in my opinion, the fact that this game with its AAA budget and testers and everything released with such a game breaking bug essentially makes it very questionable on what actually the focus was on at NRS because essentially a lot of the competitive side of the game has been invalidated up to now because 
Simply put, player 1 has the advantage. Although I would say at this point not having a Wi-Fi filter already invalidates a lot of online competitions, the bug does it even more so. I think such a serious gameplay error being missed during testing just confirms in my mind that neither NRS nor WB Games truly cares about this game ever being a serious competitive fighting game. They want their money, they want their sales, they'll get it, support the game for like a year or one and a half years and just drop it as quickly as possible. Furthermore, adding on to that, there are frequent disconnects, game desyncs, incorrect frame data, the black screen issue is nightmarish, sometimes you like rematch against an opponent and it will just like black screen and sometimes it'll sit there for like a minute, minute and a half and just like load, other times it will completely desync and throw you out of the game, which is extra annoying because it gives you the L as well if that happens, but it's actually a game glitch. There are music and sound effect issues. There's just a lot of bugs. And sure, like I said, everything can be fixed. And quite a lot of the things I mentioned are minor, but they do add up, especially with how polished uh, most of the major AAA releases have been so far this year, or at least the games I'm interested in. Like Street Fighter 6, extremely polished. Polished, Armor Court 6, extremely polished. It does sort of stand as a little bit of a weird contrast compared to this game having so many annoying to game breaking glitches. And then of course there are some other minor things. Uh, to me this game still feels a little bit stiff and awkward. This is mainly due to the poke animations, some awkward strings and just like, like I said the characters just feel stiff. Uh, compared to Street Fighter 6, which is like butter smooth with its animation, seriously, you can really tell by looking at footage of a fighting game and slowing that footage down. Street Fighter 6 looks fantastic even at half speed. You slow down MK1, you are going to notice a little bit of weirdness. Uh, I know the age old excuse of MK is that this is supposed to be like that, but to me this just doesn't cut it for a fighting game in 2023. Moving forward, this game and this series needs better animations if it wants to stand against the greats. It needs to feel a little bit more fluid. Like going from this game to SF6 and back is absolutely jarring. So I think this is something that eventually NRS is going to somehow have to address. And then finally, this is not something that affects me, but it is a common complaint people have, is that invasion mode is a huge downgrade compared to the crypt. I'm gonna be honest with you, I kind of enjoyed the crypt in MK11 and invasions I pretty much tried for like what like 20-30 minutes and dropped it and I don't think I'm going to be back unless they do a serious overhaul on the entire mode. Everybody's basically complaining about invasions, I mean this is supposed to be the big like casual offline mode that sustains this game and it just doesn't have the polish or the fun factor to sustain this game long term. It's boring, it's slow, the rewards are not there, it somehow manages to combine the worst aspects of towers with boring one-dimensional fights, weird challenges, stupid modifiers and then you get to the end and there are like some insanely difficult bosses. I honestly in its current state don't see people sticking around with this mode for long which is a negative because like I said a lot of the casual player base enjoys sort of the offline mode like the multiverse was in Injustice 2 or the Crypt and the Living Towers in MK11 so I think this is a mode that needs a big overhaul like I said if this game is meant to have a longer lifespan. So yeah, I think that's basically all my current thoughts on MK1. Listen, a lot of the complaints I mentioned are hopefully going to be addressed. The glitches are definitely going to be sort of worked out. The one I'm the most doubtful about is NRS overhauling the online. I'm just really, really have, keeping my fingers crossed that they will do it because the online needs a major overhaul. As fun as the gameplay is, Online, because of the glitches, the lag, the bad connections, is extremely frustrating and it stands in contrast because I want to play this game. I love the gameplay, I love experimenting with the cameos and all that, but most of the time online is just super frustrating unless you have like a good streak and get some of the good connections. So yeah, hoping for that. The main thing, the core positive of this game is that it's fun. Uh, I still enjoy MKX a little bit more gameplay wise, uh, I think the moment to moment decision making in MKX is still more interesting, especially with the final version than this game, but 
I think this game has a lot of potential with fixes and updates and all that and an overhaul online this game can become actually fantastic it's just currently not quite there yet what I would say is wait a little bit if you're on the fence about this game wait for some patches to drop wait for the combat pack characters to drop and then we'll see where this game is in like six months I think it has potential to be great by that time so yeah, I think with that I'll wrap it up. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel as well, there's more MK content coming, and yeah, I hope to see all of you next time. Peace out and goodbye.